Hey, happy new year. What's up guys and gals. Thank you. All you women and men who watch my videos. Let's start the year off. Right. Shall we? Let's do a really fun game. Now I found this game on the Lee chess website where they, they have a, a general forum where they share and discuss their games. And I thought this game was really well done. It's about the 1650 ELO range, but uh, there's tactics here that I want to show you. And there is a very interesting strategy that just never fails to work. It will always work for us when we see it. So, so let's take a look here. And I will certainly point this out. Okay, so we got an Epon opening. Knight f3, knight c6. Could we see a Rui Lopez? We could, absolutely. But instead we see the Gioco Piano, the quiet game, the Italian game. All good. And it's a great response by Black. Very good. Now the c3, the purpose of this bump, of course, is to press the d4. So the fight is going to be along here and along here on those squares. So so this is going to be very interesting C3 now bringing out the other knight. Not a bad not a bad thing. Look, get your pieces out. I love that. Get your pieces out, right? Time to get the pieces out. And and you're going to push the C3 now. And I've seen variations of this where Castling is perfectly fine. In fact, a lot of people do like to castle. What? Yeah, one of the strategies, if you'll call it a strategy, sometimes people like to delay their castling and ask to see what Black's gonna do. Realistically, there's not enough, there's not enough pawns open to open up the bishop to get the queen and bishop out so that he can castle queen side. So realistically. We're going to see a kingside castle. I suspect that's what White saw. And so he, he goes ahead and castle. Oh, no, he didn't castle. Sorry. That's the option. He went ahead and pressed the D4. Hit the center immediately. And this, too, is an excellent move in the Italian. Hit the bishop. Hit the bishop. Now the E will take. E takes. And... Interestingly enough, now, he leaves the tension here. He doesn't worry about that. And remember, just because an opponent takes you doesn't mean you have to automatically reach out there, grab your piece, flip it out there, and retake without thinking. And I agree, really seriously, to retake, you're hitting the, the bishop, right? But just sit on your hands for a second. He took. You knew that was going to happen. That's why you pressed the d4 pawn. Right? Yeah. So so don't be surprised when it happens. You go, oh, well, I've got to hurry up and retake that. Hold on. There's a better move. And this is so remarkably interesting. Press the e pawn. Now, this makes the Italian game a bit stronger. And don't be surprised if your opponent goes ahead and takes the pawn, because that's going to be natural, too. And now you have the option of taking the knight and disrupting the pawns on the side that realistically black will castle on. So this is a very important moment for black. Got a couple of options. Got a couple of options. Do we take? Or do we allow him this and wipe out our king pawn, our, our castled king's pawn structure? Black, I believe, black wisely chose to retake. Don't let the uh, don't let the pawn. You don't have to. You don't have to let the pawn structure be disrupted. So don't do that. So I, I thought that was a good response, and it likewise the knight takes, and that kind of helped. White, bring a piece out, and black, bring a piece out. So they're both doing very, very well. This is a splendiferous Italian game, in my opinion. This is great stuff. This is fun to watch. And now the castle. So we get both, both players castle. Awesome. So 
got a little bit more development to do, the Bishop and the Rooks. Bishop and the Rooks. Uh, White is more open to getting his development faster because Black has a pawn, or maybe this one, either way. He can come out and be in kettle, but so Black is just a wee bit behind on development, which is not a crisis as such because eventually you catch up if you're behind in development. So he is going to give us the fianchetto. You've got you've got a wonderful development and they're all decently placed. He goes ahead and comes here. Now this is an instructive time for the next few plays for the next few plays. The advantage of this is this is a free developing move because it's with tempo. The queen has to move, right? So what do we do? Queen G6. And so, and you say, well, he's already got his bishop developed. This is true, but bumping back, you're still on a good central square hitting the queen again. A most interesting thing begins to happen here. Queen comes to h5. Now the knight comes to e4. A very, very good centralization of the knight hitting the bishop, which has an angle on the king. And now the queen is on this side, right? So this crisscross, you always want to keep your eye on. That could be potentially difficult to deal with, right? So he's going to ask the bishop, what do you want to do? You've got to decide right now. And so, I mean, it's not like the bishop doesn't have a place to go. Actually, he still has three really good uh, squares to move to, right? So the real question is, where do you move your bishop because it's being attacked? Now, one of the, uh, for, lack, for lack of a better way to explain it, really, for real, one of the, uh, the higher levels of chess thinking is ignore the threat if possible. Do you have a good enough forcing move to make the threat null and void? That's what you want to ask yourself. You want to, okay, yeah, and that's a big piece, the bishop. And, and technically, the board is really open. There's a lot of really great diagonals to drive and soar your bishop across and threaten and take pieces. So that's an important piece. Is there a better forcing move that you don't have to start responding to his attack on your piece? That's what you want to ask. And I'm explaining this in detail because when you when you practice putting this kind of thinking together, your game will improve, right? There is. Knight G3. Hit the queen again. The queen doesn't have a lot of squares to escape to. And that's what White was noticing. So queen G4. I mean, she's not in trouble. But look what happens here. And this is what I'm emphasizing on purpose because it's a great strategy. And it's not through Black's fault. He did respond to that pawn by bringing his queen out. So, yes, it was an early queen out, but it wasn't necessarily to attack as such as to prevent damaging the pawns on the castle king's side. And yet, it's... it's so without a bad way of saying that that was a necessary evil to pull the queen out. But now, here is a beautiful illustration of that problem. The queen is such a high-valued piece that it's going to be targeted over and over and over again with free tempo for you. And look where the white pieces are amassing one more time. Bishop f5, hit the queen. Watch. Magic is about to happen. Bobby Fisher, one of my 
one of my favorite sayings of the fisherman, man. Tactics flow from a superior position. So let's see what happens. Queen can now escape. However, look at the position. Both bishops, both knights, on the king's side. It's beginning somewhat. It's not necessarily weak, except for one serious major problem, which makes it seriously weak. All of the pieces are once again over here. The king is over here. All of white's pieces are here, over here, and aiming to here. This is ugly for black. Black's got to be quaking in the boots. Yet he has to protect his lady, the queen, right? What do you do in this case? Watch what he does. Bishop d3 one more time hitting the queen. And you say, well, what a nuisance. Exactly. The key, the theme here is if you can attack the highest piece with tempo and put your pieces in such a great position to win the game, then do so and continue to do so and continue to do so. Be that annoyance. Fundamentally so. Queen d5. And that is a grave error. That is a grave error. Queen g4 was much better. And then the bishop, bishop comes to d2, and then d5. And black is much, much better off here. Absolutely much better. Because now he's opened the way to finish his development. He's letting the bishop out. The rook will come over. Stop in the center. You can develop your rooks. That's what Black should have done. And, and I know, well, you just took the queen off G4. That's right. Well, in this instance, you got to put her right back because this gets brutal quick. And the reason it does, and the reason it does is because tactics flow from a superior position. So is this a superior position for white? Absolutely. One, two, three, four, five pieces. And every one of them, are aiming at that castle kingside or are already over there, that's a superior position for attack. Because you've only got one, two, three pieces developed. The rooks have done nothing. Two of simply the most magnificent, powerful pieces are truly doing nothing. And the bishop isn't developed yet. And now the other crazy thing is the fiend kettle development doesn't help him now either. If he was to feed in Keto, because in order to magnify his power, you have two more moves, the queen and the knight, in order to give the bishop his power. And in two moves, this game could be over. So the theme again is the problem with development for black, as well as because of the position the superior position of the white, tactics flow. Do you see the tactic? Now that I've been motor mouth and trying to explain this, but this is how we learn. You want to you wanna take time <laughs> to look at the position to see what is going on. What is going on? Why did he make that move? Why, once again, did he bring his bishop down to harass that poor queen? because of lack of places where the queen can go is why. And he caused him to. The tactic, you've got a discovered attack on the queen. Now, when you see something like that, what you have to ask yourself is, where can I put that bishop on the most effective square possible to make this tactic work? Of course, right there, check. If you can find the most forcing move, which is a check, because with a check, the king has to respond or else block the check. But that forcing move is the strongest forcing move, and it must be addressed 
when it happens, that's why you look for it, right? Now, an attacking move is a very good forcing move. We've seen that illustrated here. The lower rated knights have been attacking the queen. The queen must move. Not exchange with a knight. You don't even want to exchange the queen for a knight, do you? No, of course not. You've got to move. When the bishops attack the queen, they're lower rated pieces. So attacking is also a good forcing move, but it's not as good as check. Because there are times when you can ignore the attack and do other stronger moves. And you want proof? How long has this bishop been under attack now? How many moves? H6. We are one, two, three moves further than this bishop was first threatened. And black still can't take the bishop because white is giving him such strong forcing moves. That's a great illustration of that principle. And now the game is essentially, it's bust. It's bust. So you got to take the bishop. Uh, it's there. Take it. Don't just move over to h8. Take the stupid piece. And of course, there goes the queen. Blam, got the queen. Notice this isn't a forcing move, but it's the winning move because of course you got the queen. Yeah. So finally, now we are one, two, three, four, five moves later. Five moves later, he can finally take that piece. Now that's great chess on White's part. Had he paid attention to the threat and tried to address that threat immediately, he wouldn't have had all those forcing moves. He wouldn't have gotten the queen, etc. And now the knight takes the pawn check, and it's here that black resigns because the force is just too superior. You've got two knights on the king side coming in with the queen. Well, a queen and a knight are two of the best combinations in a king side attack. When you get a queen and two knights, it's curtains. You can and once again, see this theme of developing the pieces. You go ahead and ignore those people who say, well, development isn't all that big a deal. Oh, yeah, I will firmly disagree. Absolutely. This bishop and this rook never got into the game. So with an inferior army, and this rook never got into the game. So black also has a little bit of an issue, but his pieces were more active. Why were they more active? Because they were able to be a pest against the Dark Queen. And they harassed her and made her move around. And it put, free of charge, it put the pieces over on the king's side without loss of move. It improved his position and activity. I mean, if you're going to checkmate the king, you got to get close to the king, right? I mean, you have to get close to the king, right? That's not just a, an analogy or a metaphor. In order to checkmate, you must get there. And chasing the queen around got both the bishops and both the knights over there. So this is a fantastic illustration. And both players are about uh, in the 1650 range. I mean, both players are excellent players. It's just that white got the much better position out of it. So Wonderful lessons because, because of the superior position, we got to see a very cool discovered attack tactic. Keep our eyes out for that one because that's always a powerful one. And it works whether the piece that gets a discovered attack is the queen or the king. It works even if the discovered attack is against a rook or a knight or a bishop as well. So just keep that principle in mind. Get a superior development, get marvelous activity, and it doesn't matter what side. I mean, this happened. The queen did retake over here, right? So the queen was on the king's side. So this particular attack happened 
on the king's side, but it wouldn't matter which side. Had something occurred similar on the queen's side, White still would have won simply because the pieces were more active and he had more pieces out. They were able to coordinate better. It wouldn't matter. It's irrelevant which side. For this game, it was the king's side. So that's your New Year's game, man. Oh, what a great way to start the new year in chess, right? So, hey, thanks for being part of my channel. Appreciate it. Go ahead and share these games with your friends and family and all that. Trying to generate some more interest in chess with people who are just starting. Uh, and it's a lot of fun for me. I'm trying to improve my chess this year. I'm going to do it come heck or high water. Uh, I have determined it's time. Life keeps kind of pushing me away from chess, and I'm, I keep coming back. I'm hanging in there, baby. Maybe that's the lesson I'm supposed to learn. Who knows? Crime in the I should be so much better than I am, but I'm going to be getting so much better than I am, and you get to come along with the journey with me. So great to see y'all. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn your notifications on, if you would, because... I'm going to be doing boatloads of chess this year, and it's all excellent chess. Just for you, my favorite audience. So thank you. Go have a happy new year, you guys. I will see you very soon with more games. Appreciate all of you.